Many Britons are well acquainted with the phrase Sweet Fanny Adams. This saying has been in circulation for well over a century, and in contemporary times, it's often shortened to Sweet F.A., signifying nothing or something utterly worthless. Variations of this expression sometimes replace F.A. with other words conveying a similar meaning. Over the years, this phrase has endured in our collective consciousness, its origins rooted in a horrific incident that continues to echo more than 150 years after the untimely death of the young girl it was named after. Today, we embark on an exploration of the tragic story of Fanny Adams. Fanny Adams came into the world on April 30th, 1859, as the offspring of George and Harriet Adams in the serene town of Alton, situated in the picturesque county of Hampshire. She occupied the position of middle child among her five siblings, a tight-knit family residing in a small market town where the population numbered just shy of 18,000. Fanny, a striking child known for her height, comeliness and intelligence, exuded perpetual happiness and held a penchant for engaging in conversations with the town's denizens. Let us fast forward to August 24, 1867, a fateful day that would irrevocably alter the course of lives in Alton. Fanny, accompanied by her younger sister Lizzie and her steadfast friend Minnie, embarked on an expedition to a nearby flood meadow, an idyllic setting for youthful play. Their sojourn took an unexpected turn when they encountered Frederick Baker, a man whom they recognized from their church congregation. Despite Baker's initial veneer of respectability, his intentions soon revealed a sinister edge. Baker's strange proposal to Fanny involved accompanying him on a walk to the neighboring village, a request she promptly declined. Unperturbed, Baker proffered money in a bid to sway the young girl, only to be met with her steadfast refusal once more. Undeterred, Baker resorted to force, scooping up Fanny and vanishing into the hop fields, leaving Minnie and Lizzie stunned and powerless. In their state of disbelief, Minnie and Lizzie hastened to Minnie's house to share the shocking turn of events with Martha Warner, Minnie's mother. Regrettably, Martha's reaction was far from what one might expect. Alton had never experienced a crime of this magnitude, let alone a child abduction. She dismissed their story, believing it to be a mere jest or child's play. The hours passed with mounting anxiety as Fanny failed to return. Concerned for her safety, a search party assembled, retracing the path that the three girls had taken earlier that day. Their search efforts led them to the hollow lane nestled between the hop fields, but Fanny was nowhere to be found. The fields themselves yielded no trace of the eight-year-old, until a grim discovery was made by labourer Thomas Gates. What confronted Gates was a scene as macabre as anything he had witnessed on the battlefield. Fanny's severed and mutilated head perched atop two hop poles. The news of this horrifying find sent Fanny's mother, Harriet, into a frenzy. In a town as small as Alton, there could be no doubt the head belonged to none other than her daughter, Fanny. Overwhelmed by grief, Harriet set off to reach her husband, George, who was engrossed in a game of cricket. En route, she collapsed under the weight of her despair. Nevertheless, the devastating news eventually reached George, who, armed with a shotgun, embarked on a quest to track down his daughter's assailant. The family and concerned neighbors managed to disarm him and forestall any irreversible actions. As the investigation into Fanny's horrific fate unfolded, police discovered incriminating evidence in Frederick Baker's possession, bloodstains on his attire, along with two small unstained knives, cast a damning shadow over him. Most damning of all was the chilling diary entry discovered hidden in Baker's desk bearing the date August 24th, the very day of Fanny's demise. In this macabre entry, Baker matter-of-factly stated, killed a young girl. With the mounting evidence against him, 
Baker's arrest became an inevitable outcome. The subsequent trial commenced on December 5, 1867. Baker steadfastly denied his involvement in Fanny's murder throughout the proceedings. Nevertheless, the jury rendered a swift verdict, guilty, after a mere 15 minutes of deliberation. Frederick Baker received the death sentence by hanging and met his demise on Christmas Eve of 1867, in the presence of a crowd numbering over 5,000 spectators, predominantly women and children. Fanny Adams found her final resting place in Alton Cemetery, and her headstone, a testament to the community's resolve to remember her story, was funded by voluntary contributions. The irony lies in the fact that the phrase Sweet Fanny Adams found its origin among British Royal Navy sailors. They adopted it to describe their unappetizing rations of tinned mutton, likening it to the remains of Fanny Adams. Over time, this expression evolved into slang for anything deemed of little or no value. Contemplating this tragic narrative, one may ponder the appropriateness of using the phrase today. While it has served to preserve the memory of Fanny Adams, it is essential to approach it with the reverence it warrants, never forgetting the real-life tragedy from which it emerged. We invite you to share your reflections in the comments section below. And until our next encounter, join our community of history memorial and crime enthusiasts. Subscribe for regular updates on captivating historical stories and intriguing crime mysteries. Don't miss out on the next thrilling episode. Hit that subscribe button now. And please do comment and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.